Hey, good morning everybody. Happy Saturday. It's Daryl here. It's bright and freaking early. It's 3.30 a.m. here in Connecticut on the East Coast. Today's video has got to do with empathy. Uh, seriously, uh, a situation, a comparison involving Donald Trump and Hurricane Florence. And what if Joe Biden and Hurricane Ian? Uh, I'll get to that in a second. And also DeSantis and uh, another situation with empathy. And then a crazy story from Right Wing Watch and uh, the Deep State and Hurricane Ian. Before I get to all that, I got, I got a bit of a connection to the Hurricane Ian story. If you guys remember back to when I was, I, I had videos in the summer, in June, July of last year of 2021, where I was homeless, uh, my landlord and her husband came up to my front door, and all of a sudden, they, they were put, they, I, I had a feeling something was going to happen. I was renting this beautiful place, this, this house, and uh, they came up to the door and basically told me I had less about, about 20 days. Legally, I have at least a month, but they told me I have about 18, 19, 20 days to get out. Get all my stuff and get out because the house is sold. They no longer owned it. And they, they were afraid to tell me. But as a consolation, they, they did like having me as a, a tenant, but they just didn't want to tell me. They, 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 they put off telling me, till, you know, which didn't do me any good, of course. And I ended up being homeless. I ended up in, living with my sister for a while because of all this. Guess where they moved to? So they moved to Florida. Okay, and they they did have, you know, they just went about this the wrong way. I'm sure they're good people and everything. I don't wish anything bad on them. They're good people. They just they just put off telling me and it would have done me. It would have been so much better if they just gave me some advance notice. Uh, so they, they asked me, they wanted to keep me as a tenant. And they asked, they said, well, we got a good side to this. You can come with us. You, we have a place for you. We have a place you can rent down in Florida. Come on down, you know. So they thought that was the solution. I just pick up, you know, I've been living in New England. I've been living in Connecticut my entire life. All my connections here, you know, medical stuff, my, my hip replacement, my doctors, everything are here. Oh, just moved down to Florida. You know, and I almost seriously considered it. This is before I lost Audrey when she, when she moved down to Florida in Jacksonville and subsequently got COVID uh, pneumonia, pneumonia COVID, and passed away within a month, which put me off Florida a bit too. Anyway, guess uh, guess where they moved to? Guess where I, I, if I had gone along with that, I would have been living in uh, Englewood, which is just a few miles. It, it's basically right between uh, Fort Myers and Venice. It was basically uh, the bullseye for Hurricane Ian. And I, I hope I have not had a chance to talk to my uh, landlord and her husband. I, I hope they, I hope they did, I hope they did well. I hope they did okay. I've been meaning to text them. Uh, and I, I know they didn't mean me any any harm, or you know, they, I, I think they just did this because they they cared they cared about me. They just didn't want to tell me that I had to get out. But, but it did me more harm than good. But anyway, I, I kind of list that not to karma. I don't want to call that karma, but just I, I'm just glad it was a it was a good decision. Uh, I'm glad I made the right decision. Okay, now on to empathy. This occurred to me right after Hurricane Ian. Back in 2017, uh, Hurricane Flo, Hurricane Florence, went through Puerto Rico and devastated, devastated the island. Trump goes down there eventually, what was it, after a couple months, five months or something? I, I don't know. It was, it was quite a long time. Uh, Puerto Rico still, I, I think parts of Puerto Rico never even got back electricity. And yes, yes, Puerto Ricans are American citizens. Puerto Rico is part of America, part of the United States, more correctly, part of the United States. Um, and he went down there. He tossed out paper towels. I'll, I'll put the, the links in view, the, all, all the links down below, because I'm sure there's going to be Trump deny. There's going to be deniers out there that are going to say, oh, no, he didn't do that. That was photoshopped. No, he, he did that. And then he was angry about the videos of him doing that, that they caught him on tape doing it. Imagine this. Imagine this. What if Joe Biden went to Fort Myers right now or Venice or any of those those other places? You know, and I I I I have total empathy for the people of Florida. But what what if the situation were reversed right now? And Joe Biden went down there and met with the people of Florida and threw out some paper towels to him. What do you think would happen? What do you think what do you think the kickback on that would be? There'll be some serious out. See how that that looks now. All of a sudden, that be, that that looks to, in that light. I think that would looks totally different to some people. 
the Trump the Trump supporters back then were like, well, Puerto Rico is uh, corrupt and we can't trust them with money. Besides, they're used to living, you know, in the Stone Age. This is this is what I, I I've heard Trumpers say, not what I'm saying. This is what I've heard the the MAGA sect say. That they live in, you know, they basically live without electricity and in these little mason huts and, you know, these, these grass huts and stuff. And, you know, they're, they, you know, they're not suffering all that much. Seriously, I, I, I heard, I heard all this stuff. Um, no, they're people. And regardless, if you, if you live in a, a mansion in mar largo or you live in a one-room, uh, uh, small home in Puerto Rico. It's it's still it's your home. It's where your heart is. It contains all your belongings. It doesn't matter if it's a mansion or it's a, a one room a one room house. You know, it's still your home. You lose your home. You lose especially you lose electricity in these tropic climates. And you know, all of a sudden now, doesn't it look a little different? You know, Trump throwing out those paper towels. Doesn't it look callous? Can you imagine if Joe Biden did that? If he went down there, it would seem like an insult, wouldn't it? It would seem like a freaking outrage. I, 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 I could just hear the Republicans and the Trump supporters screaming for for Joe Biden right now. If he ever went, hey, went down there, and did that, they they would consider it a personal insult. Oh my God, you know, well, how could you do this to these people? What's the difference? Tell me, what's the difference? People lost their homes here. They have to live without electricity, without water, without. Uh, um, basic uh, sewers and all that stuff uh, would, you know, just terrible conditions here or here. What's the difference, really? You know, it's different to some people. It's a whole different story when it happens to them. That's where empathy comes in. Uh, you know, so I, seriously, what do you think would happen? What if? What's the difference? Tell me. If you're a Trump supporter, what's the difference? What was the difference? Why, what, why was... Why was it such a big deal when Trump threw out those paper towels? You know, but, but oh my God, it would be a big deal if Biden went down and threw out those paper towels. You know, let me, Trump supporters, I want to hear you. Okay, now Ron DeSantis. He's going to Joe, he, he's running right to Joe Biden. You know, he wants 100% reimbursement and help in Florida. God, the government, please, the government, help us. We need help, Joe Biden. What was it? What was it? It wasn't even seven days ago. When he was actually planning to, to ship uh, immigrants to Del- not just to, to uh, Martha's Vineyard, but his next plan was to, sh- to ship them to, to Biden's hometown, to his front doorstep. A little joke on Joe Biden. Ha, ha, ha. You know? And, but now, all of a sudden, he needs Joe Biden's help. He's got his hand out. Come on, please help us. Hey, and here's an interesting fact, too. Back when Ron DeSantis first got into Congress, one of his very first votes back in 2013, Ron DeSantis, who's now asking Joe Biden for money immediately, Hurricane Sandy up here. I was up here. It was devastating, man. The, the tunnels were flooded. The subways were flooded. You remember the pictures of you know rivers coming down the stairs of the subways. Not to mention whole blocks out in Long Island, blocks of homes just leveled. And then the fires from the propane, uh, you know, there was fire and flooding. It it was horrendous. It looked like uh, an apocalypse. Ron DeSantis, one of his first votes was against any government file. I'll have the link right down below. Yes, one of his very first votes, you know, because he thought it would be fiscally irresponsible to help the people of Hurricane Sandy. They should pull themselves up by their their bootstraps. And, you know, that's New York's problem. Once again, you know, geez, it's it's, it's a whole different story when it happens to somebody else. You know, and Republicans, well, they send their prayers and their thoughts and their prayers. But when it happens to them, geez, the thoughts and prayers don't pay those bills. You know, if now, if somebody turned around, I, I can imagine Ron DeSantis, if there was a Democrat now saying, no, nah, let's, you know, forget Florida. Well, we'll send our thoughts and prayers. Or if Joe Biden went down and tossed the paper towel, geez, you know, oh my God, they'd be, they would be calling for somebody's head. They'd be organizing their, their, uh, their groups out in the streets, you know, their, uh, gallows. Yeah. 
Okay, now this one, this one tops everything. This this, this story tops everything. This is this is from Right Wing Watch, and I I'm, I've never heard of these two. Deanna Lorraine, she's a failed. She ran for uh, she failed. She ran for Congress in 2020. She's like one of the Q people, uh, MAGA, and she's on this show. The clip will be right down below. And uh, uh, Lauren Witzke, she ran for Senate in Delaware, failed attempt in 2020. Uh, 2020 as one of the Q MAGA candidates, okay? So these two, and, and they are talking about, get this, the deep state, the deep state they're saying, this is not me. This is a ridiculous statement by these two on a uh, right-wing program saying that they believe the weather was manipulated. It was weather manipulation technology. <laughs> In this one, Deanna Lorraine says, that how come this always happens right before election day in these red states? <laughs> really? Really? Why does a hurricane happen in Florida in September? It must be a it must be weather manipulation technology. Do I <laughs> seriously? Are you gonna sit there and seriously say that? Uh, you know, and then she talks about this. She talks about how I went to a Cat 4 so quick. And yeah, you know, there is a reason for that. Even if you deny climate, uh, even if you deny that climate change is man-made, which it, it is man-made, it is partially man-made, all the stuff and this, everything that we dump, the tons of garbage we dump into our earth and our atmosphere, every single minute of every day is going to have an effect. It's going to change things. You can't, there, there's no rug you can sweep things under on the, on the earth. It doesn't, it doesn't work that way. So even if you deny, even if, even if I, I said it wasn't man-made, you still have to admit that the temperature is rising. That's a fact. That's a fact. You, you, you see these ice caps are melting through the radar, uh, through the satellite uh, imagery. You can measure it rising and getting warmer. When the water gets warmer, that is the fuel for these hurricanes. Therefore, they intensify faster. I forgot what it was. Uh, that there is, I think it's like seven inches more rain per year per Celsius degree. Don't quote me on that. But as the ocean gets warmer, more evaporation, there's more there's more uh, moisture in the air, and plus, it's the fuel for these hurricanes. Yes, yes, that is the these. It's going to happen more. I mean, there there is a logical, obvious explanation for this. Even if you don't agree that it's man-made, there's still it, you can't deny it. And these are the same people that talk about cancel culture. Yes, it's a free country. You can propose all kinds of ridiculous ideas. You know, I, I can say I, mean, I can sit here and say that I, you know. Uh, I got abducted by pod people last night, and I, you know, I could say that. But people don't have to listen to it, especially when it's dangerous stuff like this. When, when you deny things that are going on, you hide the true problem, and the, that allows the problem to get worse. The same thing happened with the, uh, you know, the vaccination stuff and, and a hundred other things. You know, you can say what you want. But people don't have to listen to your, your, you know, like it's like saying the earth is flat. Except saying the earth is flat doesn't hurt people. It doesn't cause more damage. It doesn't allow more damage to happen. Um, you could say whatever you want, but people don't have to listen to it. People that own businesses don't have to allow, allow your idiotic theories on their program. Like YouTube or uh, CNN or whatever, you know. People don't have to listen to it. And that doesn't mean you're being canceled. That means that some other people have actual common sense. All right. The links will all be down below. You guys have a good Saturday.